Welcome everyone to another episode of Inside Edge. I'm Tom Aulis, co-owner of Edge Home Finance. I get the honor and privilege to sit with my good amigo, my pal, uh, Jose Harkin Sanchez. Um, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Excited uh, to let some of our team members learn about you, walk through a couple of things. Um, I'm going to start, you know, before we dive into your own origin story, I like to start how, you know, one, how you got introduced to Edge, how, um, kind of how you came to, to be, in my opinion, you're one of my, my key team players here, right? I think uh, you motivate us. You annoy the hell out of us a lot of times and calling us uh, Gordo and uh, picking on Howard and I for eating too much, but it's fun. You bring a good culture to the office, but I'm going to backtrack just a little. So I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, this is about five years ago you and I met, right? Yeah, right about six years ago now. Yeah, five, six years ago, and uh, I got into riding bikes with uh, a group of guys, and then uh, you and I met just from riding in that group, right? Yeah. And... What were you doing at the time? I was uh, working on cars back then. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, you were a manager of a, a kind of a automotive shop. Automotive shop. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of interesting when I met Jose. A, he's always happy. Like he was happy even with what he was doing. He was making great money. He actually used me to finance the house that uh, him and his wife and they have uh, two beautiful children. And his wife Sheila also worked for us for some time before. Um, she just left for maternity leave here not that long ago. And she's about to open up her own processing company, right? Yeah, we're very excited about that. Yeah, uh -huh. that's exciting. So she'll have, uh, this will be a third-party processor that will not only bilingual, but uh, she is really cool. She just has a very low-key attitude, doesn't get excited as far as like reactionary. Mm -hmm. um, I think being a teacher... Because that's what she did before, right? She was a school teacher. Yes. In second dealing, grade. Second grade, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think that fits perfect in an office like ours. Yeah. Because you have a lot of second grade mentality <laughs> with the way a lot of the guys and people act, and it just doesn't phase her. But uh, yeah, so Jose and I got a chance to, you know, really meet and become friends. We bonded over um, a passion of ours. I didn't know it was a passion of mine at that time. I still don't know, to be honest with you. I just like hanging out with good people and and doing healthy activities but we started biking together and then how did it come up how did you and i have the conversation about being a mortgage broker i don't really remember because uh when i met you i didn't know what anybody did you yeah. know it was like i was introduced to this bunch of people like through bikes and it's like i didn't know what uh what to expect on yep. uh on what you guys were doing yep but, uh, i think uh I think I met you like six years ago on like, um, actually the first time we uh, talked was uh, six years ago in like Tour de Tonka, I think. Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. It was like at the 80 mile mark. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I wasn't doing much talking then. I think I, um, I told you like, hey, do you mind if I push you? The, the last, <laughs> the last 20 true. miles and uh, you can put the beep later, but it's, uh, he's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably spot on. It happens, though, but it's but you know that's that's biking. You stop for two, three weeks, and you're, you know, you, you lose it. But I remember just kind of uh, you know when I met you, you have an infectious spirit, right? You're always like you go out of your way to show people uh, that you care, right? That you yeah. you do it for your family, you do it for coworkers, even simple things, right? Like. I don't tell you this enough because normally I'm busy working and so are you, but like simple things like, hey, there's dirty dishes. Like, you don't, you're not one of those people to say, hey, you guys didn't do your damn, because I know a lot of people get frustrated with it. You're one of the guys that just hop in. You don't look for recognition. You bust your ass. Um, it's really cool. But I remember, I remember our conversation when, um, you know, we were just, as we do, you and I were just chopping it up and, um, we were talking about it, about what you do and what I do. And um, I said, you know, it's pretty simple. I like it. I, I sell money, you know, and uh, I was kind of explaining it. And I remember like, well, wait a minute. What do you mean you sell money? Right. And I yeah. got into the story of, well, you know, when people buy houses, they have to have they, they have to have money for it. So we broker money and it's a pretty good living. Right. You get a chance to help people. Uh, you know, the, to me, that's still one of the biggest joys for me is when and I know it is for you, too, because I've seen how hard you work on 
some of these uh, Tahoe loans, as I like to refer to them, <laughs> sixty, seventy thousand dollar loan. But it doesn't matter, right? I think right from the beginning, you got it to where, like, money isn't necessarily a motivator for you. Successes, and I think that's what you and I share a lot in common. To where money is the byproduct of success. Like, of course, we want to make more money, but. I don't think you're showing up every day and trying to get better to make a paycheck, right? And I can't, that's something I can't train, right? It's something I can't teach people. So um, I didn't know you were going to be that way. I was thankful for it. Um, but I remember like, okay, well, hey, if you want to give it a shot, here's what you got to do. And, and I laid it out. And granted, you know, English isn't your first language, right? Yes, yes. So, I mean, I've known guys that uh, have been... 4.0 grad students that were not able to not only pass the test on the first time, you passed it on the first time and it was in your second language. Now you've gotten great at English. You know, you speak, you know, you speak just as uh, good at English as anyone. So it wasn't that, but I mean, for most people to try to take a test like that, that's already meant to stump you. It was like, wow, okay. Um, which is only the first part of this industry, right? Like, okay, you're smart enough to, to pass the test, great, right? Then the real work starts to come in. Like I told you, once you pass that, that's then you come into the real world, right? Because do you remember half of the stuff that you learned in that class? Like there was, none of it really relates to real world, in my opinion. Like yeah. you, even a lot of the, you know, oh, the max DTIs are 43%. Like, no, I was like, that works at 55, 56%. Um, but it was cool. So um, that's kind of how we met. You passed the test. Uh, I said, well, great, here's the deal. Let's give it a shot. You know, I'm going to uh, give you enough of a leeway just to stay broke because you were already making decent money. I mean, it wasn't uh, I mean, you bought a beautiful house in Minnetonka Hopkins area. Your wife was working, um, but you bet on yourself. Right. I mean, you made less money for probably the first year. Even now, you're still at the point where you're, you're climbing. Right. But I mean, you've made how long have you been here now? Three I've been years? here two years now. Two years. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at your progression. You know, as it is. I made more money than ever before, you know, even like uh, with not making that much money in comparison to uh, people who make a, a lot of money here. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, they do. But you you bet on yourself to and you made less to start off. Right. Like everybody does. You're in a 100 percent commission field. Yeah. And then it started to catch wave and you've been uh, you've been doing amazing. Now, we'll get into that here in a little bit. I always like to at least get an origin story. Right. Um, origin story is like, where are you from? Right? I mean, not, no, no, nobody knows. We always joke and say you're from uh, Honduras. Yeah, Honduras. <laughs> or uh, we always, it's the one thing I'll say that I love about the Latin culture is the more they pick on you, it means that they like you. Like, it's not many. He calls me gordo all the time, which means fat for those that don't know what that <laughs> means in Spanish. And uh, But it's out of fun, right? Like, that's just. Uh, I would say for me, I have a lot of Latino friends and that's just how it goes. Like it's not meant to be mean. And I like that. It's not a sensitive aspect, but uh, give me your origin story. Where did you grow up? Um, tell me, tell me a little bit about uh, the beginning of Jose. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up uh, in Nicaragua. I was born there, you know, um, until I was 20. I didn't know anything about like uh, English, you know, so mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, I didn't speak much. Yep. Actually, I, I, I was telling Jake that um, how I thought uh, I love you was pronounced was I love you, you. Yeah. You know, like I thought love was pronounced like love you. Yeah. Because uh, people would say like the same um, in, in one word, you know. Yeah. But then uh, I was like, um, I think that's where it all started, you know, like that's how I got here. Like I was in Central Park, uh, if you can imagine, it's like a small, smaller town. And then, like, there's Central Park, and everybody goes there, you know, to hang out. And there was this neighbor talking to this Canadian, and he was just going at it, talking, like, speaking English. So I was like, huh, I want to speak English, too. Yeah. You know, and, like, from there, like, um, like I, I always like to sacrifice, you know, for the greater good. So I, like, all the money that I had at the time, I, I went and spent it in, like, going to, to school, you know, to learn English for... I think I went, I went there for seven months. Really? At the age of 20? Mm hmm So it wasn't like you learned it growing up. So no. you decided at 20 to... All right. I want to hit pause there for a second. Because the one thing I don't know, like, 
high school, right? I don't know if it's same here. Like, were you in sports? Were you... I know you've told me a lot how you took care of your family, right? Like, you you, you still help your family, right? In any yes. way you can. But you were telling me the other day how you, you know, you wired your mom's house at 13 because you're redoing some stuff at your house. I'm like, wow, I wish I could do that. But school, was there... Tell me how that... Like, how, what was high school like for you? High school, I think I was a troublemaker mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning, you know, yep. like the first years. And then... Uh, and then right at the end, I like, it happens like I think every time, like I hit, I need to hit a spot where like I get excited yes. and then I go, you know? Like so I, sports, I, anything in high school or just working and having fun? I was, um, I was boxing from like 13 to okay. 18 probably. And I did a little bit of running, Yeah, but I was never like in like team, team sports, sports like, yeah. um, like doing like football or yeah, soccer yeah. Boxing or anything. Boxing is like. a great, I knew you were, I knew you had to do something. So boxing, good. Yeah, so um, I think like in the last two years, I, I was like, huh, I, I need to do a little better. Yeah. And then I just like started like showing up for classes and like just like getting straight A's. Um, but still, I was like the troublemaker. So the teachers were like having this like issue with me, like giving so much trouble, but at the end, like doing well in, in school, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, that, that was cool for me. Like, um like I said, I, I need to hit a spot where I, I get excited and then I go and then I, I, I have good results. So any brothers or sisters in high school with you, uh, grade school, like uh, how close were your siblings? We're four years apart. So my sister is uh, 25 Okay. and my brother is 21. So she's right four now. years older than you? No, four years younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that make you 21, sucker. That's what I was asking. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Yeah. So brother and a sister, both four years, uh, four years apart. Good. Yeah. Um, all right. So at 20, you pick up English, you start, uh, start learning it, you pay for the courses. I'm sure busting your tail to make uh, money enough to pay it because, you know, for a lot of you that don't know Nicaragua, you know, the average, I was looking this up the other day cause I, we like to pick fun at each other every now and then. But it, when you looked at what the average monthly or yearly income is in Nicaragua, what is it offhand? You know, I think it's about, I want to say. 200 to 300 dollars a month so that makes it uh 3600 yeah. bucks yeah so a year yeah when i was looking at uh looking at that i'm like wow and a lot of those a lot of the people from nicaragua even travel to other like where was it that i went to where they travel in costa rica yes mm -hmm. yeah they go to costa rica and uh work just work their tail off for 300 bucks a month, right? And, yeah. you know, the one thing that I think that that does for um, people like you and I, and it's people like you and I, is I grew up as well without, uh, I never knew I didn't have things. I felt like I had everything I needed, right? I could, I could ride my bike, I could play, yeah. I could have fun. Um, but you knew that if you wanted something, you had to work for it, right? And I think that's where, at least for me, I'm trying to instill that in my daughter today because I grew up to where if I wanted something, I knew I had to work for it, right? And I think that's where, you know, one, I know that's where you learned a lot of your work ethic from because you had to, to I mean, bust your ass to get to the point to where I'm sure you could even afford to pay for those classes. And then um, give me the rest. Tell me, tell me what happened from there. Yeah, no, I, um, I just uh, decided that if I wanted to learn, it was uh, I needed to like stop being shy, you know, so I, I need to like talk to people. So every time I will learn like a new phrase, I will like look for any tourists in the street and like start <laughs> <Practice> it out <laughs> a little. Try to like I say you. that. Yeah. Enough I love that. you, you. <laughs> that's how we got. That's OK. Now we know the story. Yeah. No. And after that, I, um, I, I just like um, I, I started working with tourists, you know, like um, doing what? Just like taking them to the airport, to places, yeah. you know, being like, like a uh, concierge, showing them around, yeah, like tourist guide, mm -hmm. or nice. So it was a good trade-off because uh, I would uh, learn more, and they would pay me some money, you know, and yeah. like, um, yeah, I, I became, uh, I became good at it, you know, yeah, over good, time. good at uh, connecting and talking with people, and uh, yeah, to doing, uh, to having better connections, like one-on-one -on -one with yeah. people, you know, and then. And I think uh, I, I genuinely like to like to be of service to people, you know, yes. and um, and I, that always like helps, I think, to 
for people to like like me back, you know? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a trade. It's not even like you're trying to do it necessarily. It's just like I, I'm the same way. I, lo I love to be of service to clients, to loan officers that I can help. To um, to me, that's that's what drives drives me as well. So, all right. So you did the tourist gig. You did the concierge part, trying to you know hustle up some money still. Tell me what's next. Close the gap for me. So I met I met my wife. And um, and we were she was trying to like bring me here to show me her family and stuff and like there was no way to to do it so she's like why don't we get married yeah like yeah let's get married and then we got married we came here and it's been seven years now <sighs> seven yeah. years two kids two no not two houses sold your other house but you've yeah. owned two houses here mm -hmm. um, probably about 150 cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably accurate yeah, i know for sure at least three bikes yeah um good so that's uh, that's awesome so you guys got uh you got married you came here now you still travel back there to nicaragua quite often right i think the last i know the last two years it may be longer than that you go back for like two months right two three months at a time your wife uh, has rented an office down there as well when she was working here she would um work remotely from there and it never skipped a beat and truthfully, and I hate to say this because I don't want you to go back there and work all the damn time, but um, you've had your best months the last two years. Every time I go there, it seems like it, like every time I go there, it gets busy. Like, yeah, so like the last time I went there last year was my busiest month. This time I went, it was my busiest month again. Month yeah, again. well, yeah. Yeah. So we it seems like if that. I need money, I we should go there. That. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Uh, that's i mean i think it's it's one part about our job that i love is you have the flexibility to like it doesn't mean just because you travel that you're not working right and i think that for me is one of the things that i've had to um I, i'll say a little bit adapt to but it's like even today i fly to uwm right last week i was enjoy like i'm i'm traveling a lot but it doesn't stop my hustle right like okay if i'm on a plane Great, that gives me the opportunity to where I, I can't take phone calls and I can actually get my work done. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's one of the, the best parts about this job is being being able to have that flexibility to go. Um, yeah, I mean, call it vacation. You're visiting, you know, your mom, your your brothers. I mean, that's that's your second home, right? And yeah. you're actually thinking about building uh, building a house there, right? You put an offer on a place yesterday. You told me. Mm -hmm. um, to have uh, to have a nice property set up down there for your son Mateo absolutely loves it you said right yeah um, mm -hmm. that's exciting so you know second you said uh, last month was your best month ever here mm -hmm. right what do you attribute that to I, I think uh, it, like like you said it doesn't happen like overnight you know like nothing happens overnight to to be honest uh, it, it's been like uh, connections that I've been building for the last two years too, you know, like, um, that come and like finally give you the opportunity to, to work with them. Yeah. And then some of the clients that I had were clients that I was working for like two or three months yes. prior, you know, working so hard on everything it too. came together. Yes. Yeah. Like my loans don't tend to be, to be easy <laughs> loans. And I tell people like, I, I'm actually grateful that they're not easy loans because I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't learn anything from it, you know? Um, but yeah, it's uh, it was a good month. I was uh, pretty excited to be back home and uh, and still make uh, the most money I've ever made. You know? yeah. yeah, it's good. It's really uh, really exciting. It's not from a lack of work, and I think that you you know you hit the nail on the head. A lot of people come into this industry looking for instant gratification, right? Like, okay, I called agents and I asked them for meetings, and I even had three. And where's all the deals? Right? It's like you know, pump the brakes a little, like Tom's kicking ass, Major's kicking ass, but look at most of these guys. Major's a kind of a, um, an exception to the rule because he a, has only been in the industry about three years, but he, such a vast network, right? Um, for me, you know, if you would have looked at me three years into the business, man, I'm still, I'm still learning. It's taken a long time to continue to not only build the connections like, you know, like we're doing all the time, but to nurture them, right? Like it's not a, if, if it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you knocked out your task list, do you go home or do you call and touch base with those people? Do you call an agent? Like that's what I've noticed with you that one of the reasons why 
know, I think every year will start to be, this was my best year. This is my best year. This is like, I'm looking forward to that continued growth. But it happens, you know, really out of, and I always, I always relate our industry to kind of farming in a sense, right? Like I cannot plant a seed today and expect it to, to bear fruit and eat it that day, right? It takes time. You got to water it. You have to um, make sure the bugs don't get it, the trigger leads, right? Like I call everything, like I relate it to that, to where um, it takes time and you're still, you know, what would you say is one of your best activities, so to speak, for networking, for me meeting people in order to, to get business? I think uh, one-on-one works best for me. You know, like if I can, um and, and the, you've touched uh, on this before. It's like people either like you or they or they don't. Yeah. So it's like if you're thinking about oh, okay, I'm gonna be like by everybody. Like I'm gonna make ten calls today, and they're all gonna like me. That's, yeah. That's not true. You know. Not true at all. Um, so I think um, having one-on-one um, uh, connection is uh, what has worked for me. Like I talk to agents and. And then they don't just like me because I do a good job, but they, they like my personality. Yeah, like personality. You know, you know you're, a hus- you're a hustler yeah. and they get a chance to actually see, like you said, I like to be of service. It's one thing to say it, but you need to, you need to meet somebody to see it. So I really like that. And I hope, I hope that you, know, you guys are hearing what he's saying. When he's going to a lot of these meetings with real estate agents or other people to try to connect, it's not always going there to like, oh, I'm trying to get a deal. It's really, hey, do you like me and do I like you, right? Because yeah. it is a two-way street. I guarantee you, you've met some people, whether it's an agent or another loan officer, that, you know, it just doesn't blend, right? Yeah. Like the natural chemistry of like respect, the friendliness, the way that you treat people. Like to me, those are the kinds of people I like to surround myself with that treat people how I try, to, how I've treated people and how I still treat people, right? Yeah. And it's easier to build that connection. Once you have that connection... Then you can start like having conversations about, you know, hey, you know, what are you been struggling with? You know, yeah. sometimes that might be business. Sometimes it might be personal too, right? I mean, you've helped, uh, um, I joke about it and saying you pick on Howard and I, but we're always driving to to be better versions of ourselves, right? Yeah. Like this morning you're at the gym at 5 a.m. You're giving me shit about it. Where were we, uh, you know, um, but that's good, right? I mean, we're really trying to, it's not like, um, I don't know. To me, like we're always trying to be a better version of ourselves than what we were yesterday, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So now we're to today. Okay. So you've got uh, you had your, your, your one of your best months in your career last month. Um, My where, best one, huh? My best one. No, one of the best, like the best. Yeah, but <laughs> I said this year. Yeah. So notice that. To to me, you're not done. Like no. we're just coming into the prime season. So last month was the best month so far this year. Might have been of all time too, but that's gonna get beat here soon. I think June, July, you got a you got a monster coming. Especially now that you're back in, in town working again. It doesn't seem to work that, that way, but yeah. Do you know why? <laughs> and this is my opinion, and you touched on it. You're not getting the instant uh gratif- like the, the work right away. Those are for the relationships that you put in. And then they come. Yeah. You just happen to be on vacation, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but if I can touch back to uh, whether uh, people like you or not, I like to like work with people that like me because of my personality and who I am. Because you're always going to make mistakes. Yes. You know? And then like uh, those people are not going to be looking for an excuse to like dump you right away. They're going to be forgiven and they're going to be understandable. So they're going to be a team player to you. So I think those are... The connections that you want not only like they like they have big numbers but there are people you can count on too you know yeah yeah that's uh that's wicked smart i've never i've uh, i could say i've never really thought about it that way but you're 100 percent correct i can say for my one of my best referral partners like we're friends right like but like you said i've screwed up before yeah, and if you screw up it's like hey you own it you explain hey this is how i could, why i thought that i could use the you know both jobs and then I, he had two jobs for two years but there was you know something to where you made a mistake that's really good so i uh i think that's another just golden nugget um all right i always like to wrap up with a question of you know where do you see yourself in this industry in five years? 
I don't think I see myself quite at your level, but I think uh, I see myself uh, helping a lot of people in five years, you know? Yeah. Um, um, I want to get more into, I, I want to expand my net, my, the, the amount of people that I know uh, in Minnesota. I, uh, I have a lot of respect for and the character that most of people have in Minnesota. And I was talking to somebody about most of people I meet, they genuinely want to help. Yeah, they want to help me succeed. They they they're like genuinely, and they're like, oh no, that's just Minnesota nice. I'm like, no, the, the people I meet, I know they they will like come to my aid if I if I need to. So yeah. I don't know if you attract those kind of people because you're focused on on those um, kind of people, but every every person that I meet is like a, a good person that I know I can count on. So it just keeps happening slower. Yeah. but in five years, I think. Uh, the amount of that group of people is going to be bigger. Your network is going to be bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's going to be solid too, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I, I see myself uh, doing pretty well and uh, and being able being able to help people, not just in mortgages, but uh, in other situations, you know, where they need like uh, either uh, financial help or... or uh, Investment help. Investment or help, or anything yeah. from, mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen you do so many weird things just, for people. Because I like to help, you know, I, I feel like money makes it easier to like, okay, I'm going to give you a chance to like better yourself, Yeah, and, you know, and yeah. I, I like that a lot. So I see myself helping more people and that's what I I think will help. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Jose, I appreciate everything you, uh, you do for us here, the morale you bring, the, you know, your infectious energy to continue for all of us to get better. Uh, I look forward to being there with you the next five years and probably the next 25 years as far as is working goes. But uh, thank you for being on the show. Thank you all of us for joining um, this episode of Inside Edge. Tune back in next week. We'll keep coming at you live with some of the best around Inside Edge. Have a great day.